Hello again and welcome back. In this video, what I decided to do was make up a Puko um, from a blade that I bought and from handle materials that I bought. Um, made up the handle, shaped it, and that's the finished article. So if you're interested to see how I got on, then carry on watching and we'll catch up again at the end. So why a Puko style knife? Well, this is um, probably what most people would think of as fairly traditional looking puko. And from what I understand, puko is a Finnish word for knife, but it's now come to be quite associated with a particular style, which is obviously quite common in that part of the world. And so this one here um, is quite a, a nice version of what a typical puko would look like. It's got a nice... Um, well, it has a, a sort of rat tail or enclosed tang inside. Not a massive blade. It's quite narrow. And this is the typical sheath you'd find with Pucos. So my understanding, and if anyone has more information, please feel free to add it. My understanding is the reason they always have enclosed tangs is because it's typically a, you know, a knife from the Scandinavian part of the, of the world cold winters and if they need to be using a knife in frozen conditions they don't want exposed metal so that's why they always have an enclosed handles wall one of the reasons it also makes it a lot more lightweight and the sheath style in this particular instance is quite typical they've got leather with wood inside and that holds the knife in place very well so the most of the knife is actually inside the sheath so i do like the style it's nice and light light in the hand and I do find that I tend to in recent times prefer slightly smaller lighter blades than big heavy blades so something quite similar um, and you can see how it's also Scandinavian design but the Mora you typically see people using it's actually really similar quite a small blade um, enclosed tang and very popular and very capable you know, for outdoor activities, so uh, it's a good style of knife. Along the same lines is this, which is a more uh, carving knife. Um, I, used, I use it for spoon carving. Um, this is the 106. Very popular, you know, very cheap, but very good um, knife for all sorts of carving. So what I decided to go for was this blade. And it is a Polar Whittler, was the name. So I think the company that made it was Polar. Um, and, you know, it's not a, it's not a very thin, it's, it's, uh, I think it's just over three mil. So it's thicker than the carving knife. But obviously the name suggests Whittler, that it actually would be good for carving. But I think with the thickness, it'll be good for more diverse tasks. And then with the shorter blade, and with that sort of modified scandy grind, it's also going to be good for carving. So a nice smallish blade and one that will be, you know, nice to carry around, use for different things, but also should be good, well, for, good for carving and for camping, bushcraft, etc. So these are the parts that I got from Moonraker Knives on the internet. So obviously we've seen the blade. That discoloration, I think, is where they've actually um, uh, retempered the the metals, make it softer, or annealed it, so you can actually, uh, if you take it as a through tang, um, you can rivet it over. Got a piece of wild olive wood, they called it. Some reindeer antler, some nickel silver plate, and then some vulcanized fiber. So those are the parts that I got from Moonraker knives and that's what I'm going to be starting out with.
Okay, so I've finished sanding it now, shaping on the, well, it's shaped on the belt grinder, and then just use some hand sandpaper, 1500 and 3000 grit, and pretty happy with the shape now. So I decided not to um, add a, a bolster or a hilt on the end. Quite like the shape of my carving knife handle, so I kind of copied that. Um, I also added in, in addition to the fiber washers, added in some leather spaces as well, just for interest really, but um, I don't know if it was really, really worth it, I'm not sure, because they sort of, they're quite hard to shape with the, the fiber liners, but um, it looks okay. Um, so final step now is just to put some boiled linseed onto the handle and we'll see what it looks like. So there's a, there is actually a really interesting, quite a nice grain on this wood. As I say, they, they sold it as wild olive, and I think in the description they said it was from Australia, but I'm not too sure, but it's um, it's not one I'm familiar with. That mark there is actually a knot rather than a, a grinding mark, just adds more interest to it. So it's quite different on each side. But that's uh, come out really nicely, actually. And I quite like the contrast um, on the front there. I gave it a bit of a strop. And uh, pretty sharp, so that's it. Turned up pretty well, and I'm pretty happy with that. So, thanks for watching.